What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kissy Girl Talk. This is episode three. And in this episode, we're going to talk about teens. How can we deal and straighten up their attitudes and mood swings? <gasps> this is going to be a good one. I'm coming straight from the dome with this. So it's not like I've taken any notes or anything of the like. But this past weekend, we met with a friend of mine, well, friends of ours, mm -hmm. Leslie and her daughter, Janiah, right? And we had a really good time talking. We normally do it like once a year, but we're, you know, planning to do it more often the next coming year. Mm -hmm. And we had a little talk about how our teen daughters, because they're about the same age, how they go through these attitudes, like they can wake up in the morning and be in such a good mood. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, it just seems like they flipped and are in a well, bad mood, like something it. is wrong. Something, and you're like, who did you just talk to? Something causes it. But I feel like, because some it can be out of the blue. I just think about something that upsets me and then I just get upset or something happens to me and I get upset about it. Okay, so you just said that normally um, when you're in a good mood like that, something causes your mood to change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are those things? <clears throat> so those things could be people or things could be like, can you be a little more specific? Boys or friends or um, sometimes it's my cycle that does that, like pain that happens to me. So whenever I feel, I'm not, I don't feel good. I just normally don't want to be bothered. Or if I am just don't feel good or just don't feel like talking to anybody then, that's probably why I would do the things that I do and get the way I get because I isolate myself when I don't feel good. Or I just want to, sometimes I just want to be by myself. And when, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I just... No, you're saying it. Go ahead. So, okay, this is my question then. As a parent, how do you think my dealing with it or your father's dealing with it how do you think we could be more effective when you're going through your little mood swings mm. just from your perspective what do you think parents could do to help you guys out when you're going through your moments which is like a thousand times every day treat us that would be a great way to help us is treating us and Take what does that mean? Doing stuff that we like to do, trying to bring our mood up, you know. So um, you just want somebody catering to your moody self? Yes, basically. Ain't nobody got time for that. Because, <laughs> I mean, we're talking about this. It's not like this occurs once every blue moon or once every other day. This is like every day, every day all day. So ain't nobody got no time to be treating you every day, all day for your foolishness. So well, can you be a little more realistic? Well, I would just say to give me space while I'm in the mood I'm in. Because sometimes I, you know, I do get attitudes with you and then feel bad about it later. All the so time. So the best thing to do is to just, you know, let me get over that and then come to you when I'm ready. Well, I do that sometimes. It depends on the severity of your <laughs> attitude because some stuff as you know i'm just not gonna tolerate like we're not gonna go around here slamming doors we're not gonna go around here throwing stuff we're not gonna go around here just acting a plum fool that's just not gonna happen it ain't gonna be acceptable it ain't you know we just not doing all that but i can understand sometimes you might have a little moment and you might need a little time to go cool off Mm -hmm. because sometimes I need a little time to cool off so that I don't choke you. So, you know, I mean, I think that's um, I think that's a fair thing to say. Take a deep breath, go woosah a little bit, mm -hmm. and then, you know, bring it on back around when everybody is kind of 
not on edge at the time. Yes, I think yeah. that works perfectly. Yeah. So can you describe to them how you've been dealing with them so far? Normally, when she goes into her attitudes, it depends, like I said, on what it is, why she has it. And um, in most cases, I just get fooled with her too. You know what I'm saying? I have to reel her back on in. Because, you know, if you let them go too far or do that stuff too much, then they'll feel like it's okay. And it's not. But we all have emotions, we all have feelings, we all have things that we deal with that may cause us not to want to be bothered or not to, you know, want to talk or communicate at the time. So sometimes, you know, depending on what time of the month that it is, you know, if I know she's going through her little time, you know, I'm more understanding at that point. And I'll just, you know, let her go ahead and get herself together. And then most times she always comes back with her repentance, like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I was so wrong. Give me a hug. And then that's when I give her a hard time. I'd be like, no, go on back over there with that. That's how you want to act. So that's kind of how I can get to her in the moment because I know once she's realized that, hey, I've been a fool over here. Let me go fix it. Then that's when I can kind of rub in to her how horrible she was by not accepting it immediately. And then I'll go on, you know, go on and get her a little hug, or whatever, make her feel a little better about herself, you know. Since Excuse we don't want to leave you over there, we got to, you know, we got to give them the love and the hug and the stuff that they need to be able to move on. So I just want to know parents of teens that are going through all these emotional up and downs and stuff. How do you guys deal with it? What do you do? What do you say to your kids? How do you talk to them? Because um, I think this is an interesting conversation because I know there is not a parent on planet Earth with teenagers that have not gone through the attitude phases. I think, I really think all the teen years is just one big ball of straight attitudes and emotions because they're going through so many hormonal changes first of all within their bodies so it's a lot going on with them so it's just a natural part of growing up you know when they're in that age range so it will be interesting to hear what you guys have to say any questions that you have uh, we're just basically talking about how we go through life for real like there I'm not um, going through and researching answers to this. I'm just telling you how we're doing it straight out the gate. So, so haven't you gone through attitudes when you were a teenager too? Or never? You know, when I was a teenager, my mama just didn't play that. You know, my daddy, he was working all the time. I did grow up with both of my parents in the home. They're still together to this day, 50 three, 54 years they've been married. So um, I've always had both parents in the home and my father worked outside the home. And for most of the time, my mom was a stay at home mom and she just didn't put up with foolishness. Like you can have an attitude all you want. She better not see it, you know, but we've kind of changed in how we raise and deal with our kids because we want them to be able to communicate more because the lines of communication were not that open it was like whatever your parents told you to do you did it you know and you better not give them no lip you gave them lip you'd be getting up off the floor you know that's how i was raised so it wasn't no whole lot of dialogue when mama said do something you did it daddy said do something you did it so um but now we try to give our kids a little more room to ask questions, to get an understanding of why I'm telling you to do this and how this is going to benefit you and help you in your life going forward. Not just because I said so or because I told you so. So um, that's really all I had to say on that subject matter. I'd love to see, hear, read your comments in the description I mean, you know, if you place your comments below. And we did have some questions for you from our previous episode. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to let her answer the questions that came in for her. And then we'll wrap it up. So, wrong question sheet. Okay, so from episode two, Ebony Lexi asked you, do you play any sports? 
No, I do not. But I've been thinking to do some, but I don't play any sport. Even though I do consider myself an athlete, because I do look like an athlete. But, but... You can't, you can't consider yourself an athlete just because you look like an athlete. And I know I could be one if I put in the but effort. What make, right, what makes you an athlete is that you actually participate in playing some sport. Okay. One or, you know, a sport. I've been thinking about playing... The question volley- is, do you play No, I sports? do not. Please. All right. I, no. This is... And what sport were you about to say you're interested in? Track. And I've been thinking about basketball, too. But I just, even though I look like a basketball player, I'm not. Uh, oh, oh, this I actually am going to get into playing one sport, and it's boxing. That's one sport that I'm really going to start playing and learning because that's one of my interests. So that's definitely one of the sports that I've been excited to play, known as a boxer. Mm. So nobody will ever try me. Mm-hmm. Didn't you say you were interested in volleyball too? Yeah, volleyball. I'm really good at that. Mm-hmm. Next. Um, Ebony also asked, in fact, all of the questions came from Ebony or Ebony. Not sure. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be, well, I'm going to be a CEO. And one thing that I really want to be is a YouTuber. And I was thinking about being an author. Like, I just have so many thoughts, but I know I'm going to get those top three done. I'm going to be a CEO, a YouTuber, a star YouTuber at a very young age. I'm going to start now. And an author. Yeah, sure, yes. you could do all that. You can definitely do it. And maybe even act in some movies. Maybe, like, write the scripts for movies. Like, that's one thing I really want to do. A Because I know I can do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, all these Absolutely. writers out here, all these trashy shows that I, I know I can do better than some of the stuff. And don't even bring up has and have nots, Mom, because I know you're going to bring up. I'm not. I will you're thinking it. I'm letting you talk. Ebony said I interrupt you too much. I don't let you finish your sentences. So I heard you, girl. I ain't saying a word. Is that it? Yes. Okay, so the next question was, what do you do in your free time? Apart from being on the phone? Yeah, what do you do in your free time? I like to read. Sometimes study if I feel in the mood sometimes clean if i'm in the mood but other than that that's pretty much it phone is number one what type of books and stuff do you read i like to read comics and i like to read those dork diary books books of interest you know (coughs) books with pictures in them so i can you know have more of a visual image of what i'm reading And if not that, you know, of course, I visualize characters, even if they don't draw pictures or any of that. Okay. Okay. Um, The next question is, what's a few of your favorite trending hairstyles? Favorite trending hairstyles. Um, I don't really think I have any, but I do like the braids with the colors in them. Like oh, box braids with colors. Yeah, box braids with colors. I like that. And I like the slick back ponytails that when they lay their hair down and they put it upon in, in the back ponytail, I like that. And I like the curly hairstyles, the curly afro puffs. I love those. Cool. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, the bun. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that is one of your favorites. Mm-hmm. The bun. Okay. Okay, the last question is what's the auntie duties? Because in the last video we was discussing um you and your auntie duties. So she wanted to know what are the auntie duties. So when Lex comes over, what are your auntie duties? I have to watch him, keep up with him, sometimes change his diaper and You know, sometimes feed him or watch him eat and just, you know, keep up with him. Try to just watch him, basically. That's all I have to do. 
and sometimes I tire him out, so he just goes straight to bed. Sometimes I'm on duty to put him to bed, but most times the first day he gets here, they leave me with him, just abandon me with him for no, we don't three or four hours. Stop. Now, now you're not telling no, the truth. That's true. We have never left you that with has, him it has been for that three long. or four hours. It might have felt like that long. Yeah, the most we've probably two or three or what? Something. No, the most we've left you with him. Will probably be maybe forty five minutes to an no, hour. To no, no, because it's been longer. Yeah, than no, that. it has not. Has to. And then this is like the it. second thing. You say leave you with him. We're <coughs> all always in the house, so you're never with him by yourself. That's I know, number but one. I'm the only one that has to watch him. Only no, you're one. not. Because sometimes your brothers watch him in their room, but. On the mo for the most part, in their rooms and the for the most part when he's over here, I have him. I'm responsible. For of him. course, because and you, you get him when few, I'm in school. You have your few little moments that you get him, and you think it's forever. It is. It, don't, it doesn't even be thirty minutes, and you'd be like, <sighs> like you're so tired. It just gives me a headache sometimes because no, he, he doesn't follow some directions. I tell him to because stop. he's too okay, though, but still. I tell him to stop doing it, and I continuously tell him. I even pop him, and he continues to do you it. You know why? He laughs at you because you don't do it with authority. You do it like you're playing with him. That's no, why I he don't. doesn't listen I'm to you. I'm serious sometimes, and he still plays around. <laughs> it's he's not a funny. boy. You have to be stern with him. It's like, not funny, Bobby. He's already caught your number. He already feels your spirit. He feels your kindred. Kitty like ways. How does he know him. that as he, a kid? They just as a baby. know. They are, they are very smart and intuitive, and he he feels your vibe that you're another kid and that you're dealing with him like you're another kid and not like an adult. Because <sighs> as soon as I come yet. over there and I be like, stop, boy. He stops. He straightens up. Same thing with your Sometimes dad. Sometimes he tries you. He does, but for the most part, he don't do what I say because he knows I'm gonna regulate. Yeah. So, that's what you have to establish with him. Okay. All right. So, those are all the questions that we have for this week. We hope y'all enjoyed episode three. And we'll catch you guys on our next Kissy Girl Talk. Give it back. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.